Throughout the Second World War, there are a number of attempts that were made to kill Adolf Hitler, the dictator of Nazi Germany. Even before the conflict broke out, Hitler survived a number of attempts, which included even bombings, which destroyed an iconic venue for the Nazis in Munich. But one of the most serious plots was the July 20th plot, which was an attempt to wrestle control of the German state away from the Nazis. It would have resulted in the death of Hitler, Heinrich Himmler and other high-ranking Nazis if it had been successful, and the military coup could have ended the war earlier. But involved in the plot were many generals who were linked to the bombing of Hitler's wolf's lair, and they were given roles following the plot. But Hitler, after he survived the attack, then launched a huge series of executions against members of the military. He would order the executions of dozens of generals, some who were shot, and a number of others who were executed on the gallows using piano wire, or even on the guillotine. It was brutal reprisals that saw thousands executed, including Gustav Heistermann von Zielberg. He was a man who months before the war had come to an end was executed, but he was also a war criminal. But what is the story of his execution? Join us today as we find out, and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Gustav Heistermann von Zielberg was born on the 10th of December 1898 in Hohenzalza, and he was the son of a Prussian major. He had a rich history inside of the military, and following his schooling he then went to cadet school, where he learned how to become a soldier. Following the outbreak of the First World War, he then joined the Grenadier Regiment Koenigs Friedrich Wilhelm IV, based in Stettin. He was then quickly promoted to the rank of lieutenant, and he saw action in the First World War, being based on the Eastern Front. During World War I, von Zilberg was then awarded two Iron Crosses, showing he was a distinguished soldier but then he was promoted yet again, and he served as a company commander on the Eastern Front, but following the end of the war, the Treaty of Versailles limited the size of the German army. He was one of those who stayed inside the Reichswehr, the post-war military, and he was employed in the East Border Guards, until March 1919 when it was taken over by the Reichswehr, before he transferred across to the 5th Prussian Infantry Regiment. Gustav Heistermann von Zilberg then continued to work inside of the military for decades, during the 1930s in Germany, the rise of the Nazis would lead to the Wehrmacht, or the German army, being expanded on a huge scale. The former limit of 100,000 soldiers was quickly passed, and Hitler was violating the Treaty of Versailles, and the post-World War I limits placed upon the military. But the reason he was doing this was to ultimately launch a huge world war which would eclipse the scale of the previous conflict. He relied on a number of experienced First World War generals, who were also sympathetic to the Nazi cause, and these veterans would be seen as good commanders for the Wehrmacht. Heistermann von Zilberg was based in the General Staff during the outbreak of the Second World War, and he remained there until 1942 in the Central Department of the Army General Staff, and he was serving as the head of the department. But then he was taken out of the offices, and as the Wehrmacht was suffering heavy losses following the launch of Operation Barbarossa, von Zilberg would be drafted into the front lines, and he was given command of the 48th Grenadier Regiment based on the Eastern Front. But following this, in May 1943, he was made the commander of the 65th Infantry Division, before in August of the same year, he was promoted to the rank of Major General. This meant he was one of the highest ranking commanders of the Eastern Front, however he was then sent briefly to Italy, where he was seriously injured, and following this he lost his left arm, after it was amputated, and then he was made the commander of the 28th Jäger Division back on the Eastern Front. But in Italy, von Zilberg had been accused of committing a terrible war crime. Whilst he commanded the 65th Infantry Division in Italy, he ordered the unlawful executions of four members of the SAS. These men were slaughtered by German firing squads when they should have been imprisoned as prisoners of war, but he was known for being brutal also with civilians. During one action, he held 34 Italian civilians hostage with his men, and he asked permission of Erwin Rommel to execute these civilians in retaliation for attacks by Italian partisans. He hoped that this would strike fear into the hearts of the local people, but Rommel ultimately refused von Zilberg the permission of doing this. But he was a war criminal, and he remained on the Eastern Front until his downfall came. Gustav Heistermann von Zilberg was, on the 20th of July 1944, ordered to arrest his staff officer, Major Joachim Kuhn. He had been allegedly involved with the 20th of July plot, which resulted in the bombing of Hitler's wolf's lair, and this did injure Hitler, but it did not achieve its objective of killing the dictator of Nazi Germany. 
but the plan saw a huge military coup that did fail, and Hitler and the SS then began to round up suspected plotters. Thousands were executed following the plot, but von Zilberg's staff officer, with his friend, had been the ones who arranged for explosives to be delivered to Klaus von Stauffenberg, who was then the one that planted the bomb in Hitler's headquarters. On the 21st of July, von Zilberg went to General Henning von Treschko to the front lines, where Treschko then took his own life. His staff officer then denied any involvement in the plot, and instead of arresting him, von Zilberg told his assistant to transfer his official duties and then to go with him to Berlin to sort things out. At this point, the staff officer then fled towards the forces of the Soviet Second Belarusian Front, and he was taken a prisoner of war. But because he had not completed the order of the arrest, von Zilberg then fell under suspicion, as did many members of the German military. But he was then arrested by the German authorities, and he was taken to court where he was sentenced to nine months in prison for negligence disobedience, and he was then pardoned because of his service in the military. He was considered needed on the front lines, and that he would have been more used commanding troops than he would have been in prison. He was kept under close watch and was held almost on probation, but then he returned to his division to command. But then Hitler himself would order the arrest of Gustav Heistermann von Zilberg, as he suspected him of being involved in further plots and in collaboration with other dissident members of the army. Hitler then himself overturned the verdict of the Reich Court Martial, and on the 19th of November 1944, he issued an arrest warrant for the general. He was then taken for another hearing, and following this trial, the court martial sentenced him to death on the 21st of November 1944. It was said he was to be executed for disobedience in the field to death and loss of military service. The judge at the end of the trial said, The court can understand his actions. The court also sees that there was no dishonourable action, that he felt so sorry for everyone. The leader and supreme warlord of the prosecution was the prosecutor, and he had ordered the death penalty by hanging. But unfortunately, nothing could be done about that. The court has to agree with the verdict. With this, the judge was saying that Hitler had ordered von Zilberg's execution, that they could do nothing about this, and they could not spare him, as it was Hitler's will, and the dictator was ultimately the prosecutor. The judge said they had to follow Hitler's instructions, but for a number of months, the former general was held in prison. He had been stripped of all his ranks and his honours, as well as his titles, and it wasn't until early February 1945 that von Zilberg was brought to his execution. At this time there had been a severe downturn in the Second World War, and the Germans were suffering heavily. Plans were being drafted for the Volkssturm and for civilians to lay down their lives to defend their towns and cities. But inside of Charlottesburg, a district in Berlin near to the Olympic Stadium, Gustav Heistermann von Zilberg was brought out for his execution. A makeshift firing squad made up of members of the German army was gathered at a proving ground near to the stadium, a place which had years before the war witnessed such happiness and celebration. But now it was where an experienced German general was to be executed. He was brought out in the firing range and was secured to a post. Before the firing squad were readied, they then shot and immediately executed von Zilberg, a man who had been a general in the German army. Gustav Heistermann von Zilberg was a very experienced member of the German army, and he had throughout his 30 years in the army fought in two world wars. He was given command of a number of infantry divisions, but in the wake of the July 20th plot, Hitler was on the warpath, trying to locate and find a number of dissident members of the army, who had been allegedly involved in the failed bombing plot. He was a man who was held accountable for the fact his assistant or staff officer managed to escape, and this officer was someone who was involved in the plot, which further implicated von Zilberg. But inside of the German capital on a firing range near to the Olympic Stadium, as the city was about to fall into ruin, the former general was executed by a firing squad made up of soldiers with significantly less honours and experience than the man they were tasked with shooting. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.